Welcome, and I'm very glad that after three years of work, this comparative draft study on multi-stakeholder processes, service delivery, and legitimacy of state institution that everybody hopefully received over the mill is now almost final. My name is uh, Diederik de Boer. Uh, I'm the head of the Sustainable Development Center of the Maastricht School of Management, and I'm the um, chairman for you today. Together with uh, Dorothea uh, Hillhorst, Professor Hillhorst, also the initiator of, uh, of this research, and I hope I can and I will explain you a little bit how it all came about. For me, it was a long and interesting road since I first encountered the different aspects of uh, service delivery and multi-stakeholder processes. I worked for some years for the United Nations Development Program on cooperation with government, governments on service delivery. And a couple of years later, I started to work for a large NGO and was again involved in service delivery. And I soon found out that there was little linkage between these two multilateral and non-governmental actors. It became even more interesting when I started to work for the Maastricht School of Management. And I also explored the private sector angle of service delivery. All three, United Nations, donors, NGOs, private sector approaches, had their own dynamics, worked in their own worlds with their own actors, activities, and budgets. And there was strikingly little linkage between them. However, they all had the same objective, sustainable development for the people in the states we were working in. But clearly, these different approaches had an impact on the accountability of the activities performed, and finally also on the legitimacy of the states involved. And in certain cases, accountability of the local partners was more with the donors than with their respective governments. And this, of course, had implications for development. And in a fragile context, these uh, situations are becoming even more pronounced. For example, working for the United Nations in Cambodia after the downfall of the Khmer Rouge, I was responsible for the setting up of village committees who were responsible for the distribution of aid and coordination of services in their villages, such as the organization and uh, the development of water wells. These committees were not part of the government, and after three years, we realized that if we wanted to guarantee sustainability, we had to integrate, integrate these committees within the states. Gradually, the Ministry of Rural Development took over the role of the United Nations, but this was a difficult process as the ministry had to integrate these village committees within the local government structures. This was even more difficult as all of a sudden these committees needed to report and were held accountable to their own government, ministry and state and not anymore to the various donors. Time, money and energy was lost due to the lack of an integral vision on state building from the onset. I could co continue, but inspired by these experiences and disappointments by the lack of interrelatedness between sectors engaged in development and service delivery, I started to do research with a team on public-private partnerships at the Sustainable Development Center of the Maastricht School of Management. In its slipstream, multi-stakeholder platforms caught my attention. And in line with this multi-stakeholder approach, we started to be engaged in researching these issues, issues in fragile states. This then finally resulted in the establishment of a network on peace, security, and development in which knowledge institutions, NGO, private sector actors, and the governments were allied. So finally, I got in contact with this uh, network, and it was very interesting to be part of that. The objective of this network, as Mr. Andries has said as well, was to mobilize knowledge in order to design concrete implementation modalities and associated instruments that guarantee the necessary conflict-sensitive development approaches towards fragile states and post-conflict countries. And I hope that some of these uh, things which we found in our research will also be um, coming back in the new approaches of, the, of this government towards fragile states. The network focused on five areas of research which were selected based on interaction with the main stakeholders and these five areas were gender and conflict initiatives for fragile states, public-private uh, collaboration in fragile states, strengthening local governance, capacity for peace building and reconstruction, and the last one, multi-stakeholder processes, service delivery and state institutions. We started to coordinate the fifth group with the Wageningen University with the disaster studies 
Professor uh, Thea Hillhorst, University of Uf Utrecht, uh, the Center of Conflict Studies with Irm van der Molen, with Klingendaal, uh, with Oxfam Novib, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with the Peace Building and Stabilization Unit. The objective of the research was to learn more about how multi-stakeholder uh, processes are influencing the implementation and governance of service delivery and its links with the uh, legitimacy of state institutions in terms of participation and implementation. We finally selected services as it is within this sector that the link between service provision and state building, uh, state building could be shown most clear. At least that was our assumption. We assumed also that the better the services provided in terms of governance and the services itself provided, the more the legitimacy of the state was guaranteed. And then finally, we assumed also that the multi-stakeholder processes were strengthening these, uh, these linkages. Our main research question was therefore, how do multi-stakeholder processes for the improvement of service delivery affect services and how do they affect the legitimacy of state institutions. This finally resulted in a, in a research project that brought us to four different countries in the world. Burundi, Congo, DRC, Nepal and the Palestinian uh, territories. We selected these four countries based on um, four main principles. We looked at the OECD DAC list of fragile states. Secondly, we uh, we, we looked into the, um, the list of countries in which Oxfam Novib uh, was present. As for us, as, uh, as, as researchers, it was also very important to have a local network on the ground. The third aspect was uh, focusing on the list of Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, what were the countries the Ministry of Foreign Affairs were involved in. And as for it, for us, it was also important that uh, we could uh, have some, some interesting uh, cases and so that's a, a more practical uh, uh, criteria for selecting these, uh, these countries. Well, as you can see, I mean, for example, we selected finally Nepal. Nepal was not a country of the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but still, uh, to us, uh, it was an uh, important uh, fragile, uh, so-called fragile country, which we, uh, we took on board. So finally, we selected these four countries, Burundi, Congo, Nepal, and the Palestinian territories. After that, we were sitting down with the local stakeholders in the selected countries. The Dutch Embassy, SMV, Oxfam Novib, uh, etc. We were looking for MSPs in a service sector which either were bottom-up initiated or top-down, NGO-led or state-led. And were researchable in terms of the possibility of being assisted by local counterparts. This resulted finally in the selection of 12 cases. In all the countries and in all these cases, we worked extensively together with local stakeholders. And the four main ones are the Association for Cooperative Operations Research and Development from Burundi, ACOR, from Congo, Observatoire Gouvernance et Pays, uh, OGP, from Nepal, the Netherlands Development Organization and the Rural Roads Forum, and from the Palestinian territories, the Palestinian Hydrology Group, PhG. Next, after an extensive literature review, we started together with local researchers our perception-based research on the relation between state legitimacy and service delivery through MSPs and interviewed overall more than uh, 520 persons individually or in focus groups. Based on our findings, we organized validation workshops per country in which we discussed the findings as well as the policy implications. And in fact, today we have our final stakeholder meeting in which, we, in which the findings of the four countries are analyzed and presented to you today.